Okay, okay. So, um, good evening, everyone. Oh, here we go. There we go. So, um, good evening, good evening, and welcome. Here we are tonight to um, continue working on our class number six. And uh, for this evening, we have uh, another topic, one of those topics that is um, great to cover. And uh, this time around is going to be um, how to use participles as adjectives. We're gonna be talking about um, present and past participles. Both are very common as adjectives in English. And uh, yeah, we're gonna learn how to use them, when to use them. And of course, we're gonna be looking at some of the best examples we can create regarding um, these participle forms of verbs. Now, we also have three conversations that are pending. Well, tonight we're gonna have a third one, but we have two pending conversations that we need to practice. Um, so I assume that that's basically what we're going to be getting started with. Um, basically, you know, dealing with the two conversations that are pending, um, basically just practicing them and get them out of the way to continue on with, uh, well, the topic itself that we have for this evening. And afterwards, um, yeah, basically going into the second conversation because uh, I feel like, you know, it's important that we have that practice. So tonight is basically going to be about the conversations. We're not actually going to be doing much more, uh, but, you know, the conversation info. Um, hopefully you guys are doing great. For this evening, as always, or as uh, it is usual, I have a question for you. And the question tonight is, well, very easy. I want to know... What is your favorite movie, book, or TV show? When I talk about TV show, well, it can relate to many things. It can be a soap opera. It can be a series. It can be, well, a uh, weekend kind of show, a late night show. There are many options. When we talk about um, TV shows, it is a very broad, you know, um, it's a it's a broad uh, definition. So it includes many things. Therefore, you have the chance to pick uh, basically from anything that has ever been created when it comes to entertainment. So yeah, the question this evening is going to be that. What is your favorite um, book, your favorite movie, or your favorite TV show? So consider that, you know, consider that you can take soap operas, uh, series, shows that are, I don't know, late night or weekend sort of shows. So also sports, so anything that you have ever watched can be considered on uh, or as a TV show. So for starters, I think we're going to be hearing from Raul. In your case, Raul, what will happen to be your favorite book, series, I mean book, um, movie, or TV show? Mm, eh, let me see. Um... I con uh, my favorite uh, TV show or my favorite um, yes my favorite TV show is the Big Bang Theory mm. because I consider that uh, is a is a is is a, a comedy series mm -hmm. specifically uh, when I when I uh, see a Sheldon Cooper because I know that. He is very intelligent, but uh, he 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 uh, does uh, uh, jokes, uh, crazy crazy things, mm -hmm. especially uh, with Benny and 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 his uh, friend Leonard. Mm -hmm. And I consider that uh, um, is a is a TV show uh, fantastic because it's a uh, it's a large uh, series, but uh, the uh, but uh, I thought I I don't I don't watch or I didn't watch the final of the series, mm -hmm. but I know that uh, Sheldon um, get married with um, I I don't know uh, the, Amy 
Oh, no, 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 Amy. De... No, eh, Amy, Amy, Amy. ¿O es, es Amy? Amy, yes, Amy. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And I can say it's my favorite uh, TV show uh, because uh, it's a it's a uh, it's a show, TV show um, crazy and, and, and I don't know uh, funny mm -hmm. and 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 that's it. Okay, great. Now there is one. There's actually one adjective in English that is very useful to describe, you know, shows like that one. And I will say smart because smart can cover um, from something that, you know, shows you something intelligent. It can also mean something that is like, um, like a specific kind of fun, you know, like there, there are jokes because they, yes, they are, but the jokes are not like, the regular jokes like clown jokes they're more thought out or you know thought through jokes so it's not simply yeah. like just throw a joke there and, and that's it and uh yeah I, I i old i remember that i used to watch it a lot when i was younger when i was um actually learning english uh, i remember that my teachers will normally say that uh you know they recommended us to watch friends i don't know if you ever watch friends But yeah, they recommended us to watch Friends because they said that in French, you can find more like day-to-day -day conversations. You can see how friends relate to one another. You can also learn how to make jokes or understand jokes. Um, and it's true. I actually agree with that idea. But as I was, or I got that recommendation when I was like in third year in the university, I thought that I needed something more, you know, that I needed something that was a little bit harder, a little bit challenging for me. And that's when I started watching um, The Big Bang Theory. And yeah, you have a lot of words that are like unknown, you know, a lot of like um, words about science, physics, um, astronomy, many other like, you know, areas of education that are not covered in shows like Friends. Um, so that helps you a lot when it comes to learning more vocabulary. I don't know. Did you watch it in English or in Spanish? I forgot to ask. Raúl, sorry, sorry. Can you repeat, please? Yeah. Did you did you watch the um the show in English or in Spanish? Um. Well, um, in Spanish. In Spanish. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well. Um. So But, I was. Uh huh. Sorry. Sometimes the 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 bit in the TV. Mm -hmm. uh, the. the It, 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 it was in in English, but sometimes in Spanish and English. Okay, so yeah, I was I was mentioning this mostly from a perspective of like you know learning English or like from like the teacher point of view, and uh, yeah, in my case, I will highly recommend it in English because it is very challenging and it has a lot of words that you know are are tricky and they are challenging. So they can help you learn, you know, about different, different, different areas. Um, and yeah, I mean, it doesn't mean that friends or shows rela related to friends are not fun or do not have, you know, that, that area there that can help you learn more. But the Big Bang Theory has a lot to offer. And in terms of vocabulary, in terms of like how, um, how people relate as well in a like higher level of education, It has a lot to do with that as well. But good, great, very good. Um, how about in your case, Rodrigo Hernandez? What happens to be your favorite movie, TV show, or book? Well, I think uh, my favorite movie is... Uh, uh, Which one, sorry? Well, what, what is the, I don't remember the, the name. Uh, in this day, the, the, this movie had a, a scandal uh, because I, uh, oh, yeah, I, I don't remember the, the uh, Sandra Bullock, because I don't know if Sandra Bullock. Uh, <laughs> It's, a, it's about a, a, a boy with, uh, 
The Blind Side, that's the movie you're, the you're blind, referring to. The Blind, yeah, yeah, the blind Side. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not the favorite movie because uh, I, you know, I, I really, I really, uh, I, uh, this movie is the Como sabía, me gusta, me, me gusta, me gusta la historia, me, me, me gusta la historia, ¿cómo se llama? I like, no, 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 no. I like, yeah, I like the, the story. The story of the, of the, the history of the, of the, of the friend. Mm -hmm, of the boy. And, 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 where, and, what, and where the, the family, sorry, 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 sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember, I mean, I, I, it's been a long time since I wanted to watch that movie again or rewatch that movie. Um, right now I don't have HBO Max. I think I'm gonna get it back soon. But yeah, it's it's something that I I am I'm pretending to do because yeah, it's a great movie. The Blind Side. It's an amazing movie, and the story it tells. It is supposed to be uh based on a true story, you know, of a uh football player who well he wasn't his family wasn't really supportive, um uh, with him, and well, there was a family who had like more possibilities than his family. That started helping him and at the end of the day they ended up you know helping him to get into college it was mostly because of his um sports skills but still you know that's something great that um some people don't do like it's not something that happens every day so yeah it's a great story as you say and uh, it's something that you know as as humans or as society maybe we need to learn you know to like share some of what we have sometimes and not only think on like the ones that are in our inner group. So good. Very good. That is a great, great story. Sorry, Karen, do you want to share something? Yes. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hey there. Um, well, regarding that story, that movie, mm -hmm. uh, I like that a lot. Uh, but uh, right now there is a problem. I think that um, the main character, Big Mike, mm -hmm. is uh, trying to zoom the company. Uh, that produced uh, that movie because he said that uh, um, it was not free, that they don't want, uh, they don't give him money, uh -huh. that the story is not like the movie. Oh. And this moment is like legally problems. And um, he is trying to take the Oscar because I think Sandra Bullock uh, got an Oscar for that mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. So he said that it's not true, that it's lie, that it's. It's not like the movie. That's the tricky thing when you do movies that are supposedly based. That's why I, that's why mm -hmm. I said, you know, supposedly based on a true story. Because, yeah, if they're uh, like the people that are in the movie or in the story are still alive. Well, they can, of course, tell the truth and mm -hmm. say that, you know, it's not completely like I that. I think it's, it's a little, well, it's late to yeah. try to get money yeah. from uh, the movie or Sandra, Sandra Bullock. Um because it, I, I think this movie is around 15 years old. It, it's, yeah, it's around 15 it has, years old because it was from uh, 2009. Yeah. And so, just right now, he's trying to get some money. Well, maybe, yeah, as you said, it's a little bit late. Maybe he should have reacted before because it's basically unbelievable that he's not going to watch mm -hmm. a movie that is based on his story in such a long time. So, yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. now, um, taking you, Karen, what would be your uh, favorite book? series i mean tv show or uh, movie um favorite book i am i think the alchemista uh, paulo coelho alchemista yeah. is a really yeah. good book i love it uh, i, I have that, read huh? a lot of book uh, from paulo coelho but i think that is my is my favorite and regarding mm -hmm. tv show yes i love the big one theory but as you said 
the English is a little bit different. It's harder. It's like technical. Technical. Mm -hmm. I, yes, a lot of words that I don't understand because that are just like, well, regarding the show, right? And um, uh, what el what else? TV I ah, movie. Uh -huh. Um, Twilight. Yes, I love Twilight. The saga. The, the first one. Yes. Oh, the first one. one. Oh, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Very good. So yeah, um, The Alchemista. I didn't remember that I had read that book. It's I. It just popped into my head, and I went back what like fourteen years back into my life and i remember when i was finishing it um i think i read it on a pdf because that one i think i don't have on on paper i have many books on paper but that one i don't have on paper um but yeah it's it's a great book and his style of writing paulo coelho he has such a great style where he projects like the imagery and he helps a lot when it comes to like creating the whole setting for you to like dive yeah. for you to dive into the into the scene and yes. uh, yeah, it's it's very good. So yeah, in my case, my favorite book of all time, uh, probably based on you know some of my past traumas, is um, Loving Times of Cholera. I don't know if you guys have ever uh, heard of that one. That's yes, by I have Gar heard. Yeah, that's yes. by by Garcia Marquez. So yeah, Loving Times of Cholera. It's I highly recommend it. The story is just great. There's even a movie. If you don't like books, really? there is there is a movie about mm -hmm. it. You can watch it on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 basically free, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, Loving Times of Cholera. That's a great, great um book, great story. It's one of those love stories that well, it doesn't end as well as you as one would imagine. You know, it's not like a like a cliche love story. It's it has many variants here and there, and yeah, it's one of those things that. Um, even though it's based on a classic setting, like on a colonial setting, the story sounds very, um, very like, like new because of the things that happen in it. So yeah, mm -hmm. I highly recommend it. If you are readers, if you guys like read like books or like to read, um, love in times of cholera, I will highly highly recommend that one. But okay, okay. um, uh, great. This... Mm -hmm. Sorry, sorry, just one question uh, regarding that book. It is based in the in the illness, cholera. Mm, no, it, is... it is the setting is around those times. You know when cholera mm. started hitting Colombia, so okay. it's around those times. It's around the time when the um Panama Canal was being built. So mm. basically, all the things you know, like connect a little bit. But um, okay. the thing is that it is extended almost for seventy years. Like the whole story covers around 70 years because they like I'm I'm giving spoilers here but the thing is that they you know start the thing when they were like on their teenage days and the story ends when they are basically on their late 80s so it's around 70 years of story um so that's why you know cholera is like the reason why they kind of got to meet one another or yeah. got to like be together but yeah it's not necessarily only based on that but it does cover okay. a little bit oh, what of that. What happened? In the... Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, and now the last person we're gonna hear from tonight is gonna be Rodrigo. In your case, Rodrigo, what will happen to be your favorite book, TV show, or movie? Okay. Uh, good evening, teacher. In mm -hmm. in my case, uh, I am honest. I don't like uh, read a book, uh, because okay. I prefer watch. Uh, videos in youtube for example uh, for different documental mm -hmm. uh, i don't like a favorite movie uh, because i like many movies uh, for example rocky uh, karate kid i like the old movies i don't like the that's what actual I was movie say. yeah that's yes what I, was the, the, I prefer the the old school <laughs> right <laughs> Um, my favorite TV show is sports. Uh, for example, uh, watch the match soccer, uh, the Premier League, uh, Spain League, for example, and uh, UEFA Champions League, right? Okay. Um, I be I be win watching Cobra Kai series. Uh, I like this series because. Is made by um, the original movie 
that is um, Karate Kid uh, mm. because I like the combat series mm -hmm. and the combat in, in, in movie. Uh, for this reason, I like uh, the Rocky Balboa, for example, uh, the five the five movies I I watch all movies. How about Creed? Have you watched Creed as well? Yeah. Oh, great. Very good. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, um, yeah, when it comes to books, that's why, you know, normally when I have the chance of like recommending you guys to watch the movie instead of the book, I will do it because I personally prefer to read it. I mean, in my case, I am uh, someone who prefers to read before watching However, that's why sometimes we get disappointed. And one day, I don't know when, but one of these days, I am going to ask you something. Um, and uh, just get the question, think about it, and probably that way you're going to have better answers, you know, when it comes to sharing your opinions. The question is probably going to be, what would you do if you were a millionaire? And when I get that question, when I mean, I got that question a long time ago. So when I get asked that question, my dream is to create a series based on the every single detail in the saga of um the hunger games i'm a huge fan of the hunger games those were basically the first books that i read in english like the first uh three books that i read in english and um i remember the first time i read them i didn't really understand all that was in the books but then you know on my second run i was able to catch up on more like of the ideas and the third time that i read them was that when i finally was able to understand basically everything that was in there. Um, right now, one of my friends, he has one of those books. I actually realized uh, just like, like a month ago. Um, he hasn't given it back, but the thing is that, uh, yeah, it's it's a great series and I would like, I would, it's a great saga, sorry, but I would like to make it a series. If I ever get the chance of like becoming a millionaire, that's the first thing that I, I want to do. Of course, that is also a business, you know, because getting into um, producing and all that is it gets revenue. So it's not like I'm only going to waste my money. I, of course, want to get some back. But OK, uh, great. Now that I know a little bit more about you guys and how your preferences are based around, you know, a few things here and there, um, we are going to start with the work for this evening. And as I was saying previously, the first thing that we're going to do is basically wrap it up with these conversations because we need to go ahead and practice them. Um, they have been sitting here for a while. Um, so yeah, now it's our job to basically wrap it up. So I know that it has been a while. Maybe you guys don't remember, but this is the one that was about the European Union. We never got to practice it. I am going to read it one time. And then um, I want you to think about this. The last line. So in the last line, we have this. Kelly says, what? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Okay, so think about this. If you were John, what would you say? What was what will be your reply after that last line? While you thought, what well, sorry, while you think about that, I'll go ahead and do a um repractice on this so that we remember how to pronounce all uh, of the parts of this conversation. So it will go as following. Hello. Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think the euro is used in the EU. Oh, right. And uh, is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Huh. Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Um, well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Okay, now, I want to know, what would you say? In tu caso, Rodrigo, I want to start with you because you have experience on this field. Um, what would you say if you were the one who is mistaken? If you are John and you called the wrong number, what will be your answer on the, I mean, before you hang up the phone? Uh, Mendoza? Mm. 
No, I don't know, teacher. <laughs> okay. Um, how about in the case of uh, Evelyn? What would you say, Evelyn? So you called the person, you got the wrong number, you were you're mistaken about who you're calling. So what would you say after they tell you that you you caught you have called the wrong number? Maybe say, oh, excuse me, what's my mistake? Um, well, for example, if um I can ask you, uh, do you have the number of this bar from of this place? Or maybe, okay, no problem. Uh, thanks for for asking. No, for how do you say contestarme? Answering, yeah, or picking uh, up, picking up. Podría ser otra forma. Esa es más directa hacia lo de los teléfonos, el decir picking up. Um, pero también pueden, puede ser thank you for answering. Okay. Or maybe um, say uh, 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 ya, ya a joking. <laughs> maybe ya no. say the joking ya. and say, I, 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 not, I, I am not sure. Ajá. Podría ser. Ya, ya no sé todas las opciones casi. Pero sí. O sea, eso es eso, ¿verdad? Excuse me, my bad, podría ser una opción, sí. Excuse me, my bad, o sea, lo siento, me equivoqué o qué sé yo, disculpe, este, mi error. Um, o el otro que dijo, eso fue una cosa que me gustó porque yo personalmente sería lo que pensara decir, ¿verdad? Uh, excuse me. Um, bueno, eso de my bad sí lo dejo. Excuse me, my, oh, come on, my bad. Y luego podría incluir eso que mencionó usted, de preguntarle, um, do you happen to have a contact uh, number from a travel agency? Eso podría ser, ¿verdad? Do you happen to have the contact number or a contact number for a from a travel agency? Esa podría ser una opción porque... O sea, no solo dejo la llamada así, sino que de una vez aprovecho, ¿verdad? Tal vez esta persona, pues ya que es un eh, salón de belleza, pues conoce, ¿verdad? De alguien que pueda eh, trabajar en la industria y pues que me ayude con las preguntas que tengo. Pero lo primero, claro, decir, oh, excuse me, my bad. O sea, como disculparme, ¿verdad? Reconocer que me equivoqué y luego ya. Oh, do you happen to have a contact number from a travel agency? Ahora, aquí viene otra cosa. Hay que ser reales. If I was Kelly... I will simply say no because, well, in my perspective, okay, in my perspective, um, I feel like, you know, John was being a little bit too up there. You know, he was like, um, like too excited about the questions he was asking. So he was not being that polite in my perspective. So probably I would not necessarily um, reply in the most polite way. But uh, when it comes from like, you know, the, the exercise right now, This is a great way of going about it. You know, do you happen to have... Oh, esta cosa aquí. Importante. Cuando utilizamos esto, el do you happen to... Eh, básicamente es como si estamos preguntando, ¿verdad? De forma más amable, si alguien podría tener algo, ¿sí? O sea, por ejemplo, si... Um, si nosotros estamos buscando a alguien, podríamos preguntar, have you happened to see this person? Have you happened to... to um, o sea, lo más sencillo sería simplemente decir, have you seen this person? Sí, has visto esta persona. En cambio, el happen es como, o sea, si en algún momento, ¿verdad? Y de, además, de, haciéndolo de forma amable, como haciendo un énfasis en que, o sea, necesito como ayuda en encontrar a esta persona. So, have you happened um, to see this person? Or, um, here, do you happen to have a contact number? Um, do you happen to have a pen? If you need a pen. So, do you happen to have a pen? Sí, o sea, ¿será que tienes un, un lapicero? Um, do you happen to have some water? Sí. ¿Será que tienes algo de agua? Básicamente así sería el utilizar el do you happen to. Entonces ayuda bastante para sonar más amables en los favores que estamos solicitando. Sí. Do you happen to have a contact number from a travel agency? Si yo solo digo, do you have a contact number from a travel agency? Es casi como si yo le estoy hablando a un amigo mío, o sea, alguien a quien yo conozco. Entonces, y... Suena como más, digamos, más coloquial la conversación. En cambio, en el do you happen to, es como si ya ahora estoy reconociendo con respeto a la otra persona. 
So it will be way better to use do happen when you want to ask a favor from someone that you don't know. Maybe, for example, um, if you want to know the time, um, even if you see that the person has a phone in on their hand, or even if you see that the person is wearing a watch, you can still go ahead and say, do you happen to have the time? Entonces, si eso sería como eh, de forma amable en la calle, ¿verdad? Preguntar, ¿tiene la hora? Do you happen to have the time? ¿Será que tiene la hora? ¿Será que me da la hora? So, yeah, that's a great way of going about this, this sort of thing. Now, I want to hear one more example, one more person who has an idea on how would you guys reply if you were John? What would you say if you were John? I want to see how creative we can get with this last line. Um, maybe um, Raúl. In your case, Raúl, do you have an idea of what would you say if you were John in this last line? How would you apologize or how would you go about um, about this conversation? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's correct. Um, oh, excuse me, my mistake. Um, um, I, I, um, I give, uh, I give the, um, uh, um, I don't know. Como decir, te, te daré nuevamente el número en inglés. Aquí sería complicado porque el detalle es que Kelly es quien eh, está diciéndole que se equivocó el número, sí. Entonces sería difícil que él le dé el número de nuevo a ella. O sea, eso, eso que tú quieres decir te diría, I'll give you the numbers again, sí. I'll give you the numbers uh, once again. O sea, así podría ser. Pero en este caso la complicación es que, o sea, yo soy el que me equivoqué, entonces... Como por supuesto teníamos el ejemplo anterior, ¿verdad? Que era más como solicitar si tiene esta persona un número que yo pueda usar. Entonces, así puede que funcione mejor. Pero si le digo, le doy el número otra vez, es como, ¿por qué me va a dar el número de nadie o de quién si yo no necesito el número de nadie, ¿verdad? Si usted es el que, el que se equivocó. So, yeah, um, sorry. Yes, Karen. Um, I have an example. Okay. Well, I will say, I'm sorry, I got run uh but next time that i need a haircut i will call you back okay i'm <laughs> sorry i got it wrong but next time i need a haircut oh haircut i'll call you back that would be great yeah i'll call you back great yeah that's a great option all right so um Ahora, otra corrección o un pequeño detalle que les quería mencionar. El decir, my mistake, eh, se usa, sí, se puede utilizar en una conversación, pero es más común que lo utilicemos así, solito, solo decir, oh, my mistake, sí. O sea, por ejemplo, en el caso que ustedes se estén encargados de um, poner los nombres de una serie de personas en, 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 cartu en cartulinas, porque los van a poner, ¿verdad?, qué sé yo, sobre la mesa o en las sillas para reservar el espacio para una persona específica y alguien les diga, oh, my name is not Catherine with an H, it's Kath Catherine, like, you know, without the H. Um, so there you can say, oh, my mistake. Sí, en situaciones así, lo siento, mi error, nada más. Pero así como esto, cuando tenemos una oración más compleja alrededor, um, it's better if we say my bad. Oh, sorry, my bad. Sí, es, el decir my bad es como mi error. Sí, o sea, lo siento, mi error. Básicamente, funciona de la misma manera que el decir my mistake, pero my mistake suena como una palabra muy larga en medio de esto. Entonces, y por eso no es común um, que se utilice, ¿verdad? So, yeah, it's, it's way better if we say um, my bad instead of my mistake. It works because it works. You can use it alone, but not in like longer conversations. Now, the next one. Um, sorry, I got it wrong. Yeah, this is great. This is a great way of, you know, admitting that you, um, that you made a mistake. Then here, um, the next time I need a haircut, instead of using the word haircut, you can also use 
I did um some trimming. This is only, you know, this is just me sharing uh, some words. I need some trimming. Uh, this is basically like when you reduce, you know, some of your hair. Because, yeah, most Americans, I don't know if you guys have ever had the experience, but most Americans don't necessarily cut their hair. They normally just trim it, you know, most of them. Um, and I tell you this because when I used to go to like, you know, get my hair done, I was always asked, like, why do you like it that way? You know, the lady will always ask me, like, why do you like it that way? Because it's like there was there were not many Latinos in Minnesota. So I was like one of a kind, basically. And um, like they were not used to like using the machines, you know, with with men to like cut their hair. They normally use would use their, the scissors um, because they simply just trim it. They just reduce the size, but they don't go all the way into like using, you know, the um the actual machine on the hair but it's just something you know it's just a, a recommendation as well instead of haircut haircut works i'm not saying that it doesn't but you can also use the word trim in there so yeah great it's a great way of going about it um but i think that we're gonna go with the previous one the one that we had Ooh, so yeah vamos a ver como fue lo que dijo eh... ¿Cómo se llama? Oh, she's gone. Oh, no. ¿Cómo fue lo que dijo Evelyn? Era, um, fue sorry, my bad, algo así, ¿verdad? Oh, excuse me, nada más era. Excuse me. My bad. Y luego, en la otra, do you happen to? Um... of a um travel agent Ooh. travel agency there we go so this is how we are going to do the conversation a ver entonces vamos a estarnos dividiendo ahorita vamos a hacer esta conversación primero vamos a regresar a analizar la segunda saben que no mejor no mejor veamos las dos de una vez so get your screenshots from this conversation get the screenshot from this one and now we're going to look at the second conversation. We're going to do two at the same time, because if not, uh, it will be wasting too much time. So this is the one that has to do with the topic that we had yesterday, the one that is related to the present perfect continuous. Um, and it's titled, What Have You Been Doing? So here we have Feet and Gina. These are the two people being part of this conversation. And the conversation is supposed to go as following. Hey, Gina, I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing lately? Nothing exciting. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've been only been spending money. I'm pursuing a full-time modeling career. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. I need to. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. Okay, so here, if you guys remember, uh, we are going to be using the present perfect continuous, which relates normally to situations that we started to do at a certain point in the past, and we are still doing in our present. So here we have. Um, I've been working two jobs. So this is something, you know, that Gina has been doing for the last six months. So here is the period, the amount of time um, for which she has been doing this. Then uh, one time when we don't really have um, like a specific moment or like in a specific time frame is going to be with this one. When Pete says, I've only been spending money. So he doesn't necessarily says since when. You know, not at this time, at least. But then uh, here we have another example. I haven't been getting any work. So this is another of the ones, you know, that includes the present perfect continuous. So take your screenshots from this conversation as well. And I will be opening the uh, breakout rooms so that we can go ahead and have, you know, some time to wait a second. Teacher. Yes. 
I can't take a screenshot on the last uh, conversation. Or only this. Uh, ahorita, le muestro la otra. No problem. Oh, wait. So it means... One second, guys. I'll stop sharing for a bit. Okay, so it seems like I don't have the breakout rooms available right now. So I will let you to leave you to um, practice the conversations here. Si sí, ustedes pueden compartir sin problema eh, la pantalla ahorita, voy a voy a habilitarles que lo puedan hacer. Um, ahí está. Entonces pueden compartir ustedes la pantalla y ir trabajando en la en las dos conversaciones. Mientras tanto voy a ver si resuelvo ahorita lo de los breakout rooms para que lo podamos utilizar en las siguientes. Eh, en la siguiente conversación que tenemos que no sé si la saquemos esta noche pero igual, so yeah um, for now, I will leave you guys to it go ahead and practice the conversation as if I wasn't here so you can, you know um, arrange who is going to practice with who and let's do it here all together because yeah, breakout rooms are not available right now so I need to take a look into this so yeah, I'll leave you guys to it um, probably like for eight minutes for those two conversations I think that's enough so yeah, let's go ahead and work on the breakout room, I mean, the um, conversations right now. Maybe uh, someone that use the computer can uh, share the, the, the screenshot. I am not computer too. To search. I'm using a computer, but I didn't take the screenshot. I, I have. Is somebody using a computer that take the screenshot? Probably he can share the screen. Or I will send to the chat to the screenshot and maybe we can we can read the only one screenshot that I have for the stars, maybe. Okay, try to send. I only uh, I only I could take the the second conversation and I and I send the image in the uh, WhatsApp group. Mm. I have two conversations. Uh, I can share the the picture. Okay, please. Okay, let me see or send to WhatsApp group and we all read. I think Rodrigo is going to share it. Okay. Maybe we can say? Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you want, we can we can read about both, for example, me, Kelly, Rodrigo, John, and then to the other to the other couple, read again. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and start. Okay. Okay. Hello. Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think the euro is used in the EU, you say. All right. And is English spoken much there? There? Oh, I really have no idea. Uh, well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How could I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a high salon. 
You have to round number. Excuse me, my bad. Do you happen to have the contact number of a travel agency? I haven't. Okay. <laughs> okay, I I share the next speak. Jared and Claire and Karen, maybe. Okay, uh, which one? This one or the first one? Thank you. Much better. Doesn't matter. Or Raul and Karen and Jared. Hey, I can. Eh, yo haría lo de Pete. ¿Está bien? Ah, uh, yes. Can you, uh, Rodrigo, can you just make it a little bit uh, smaller? Probably 120. Because my computer is like a small computer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Se puede acercar la pantalla. Bueno, yo la puedo acercar. Puedo hacerle zoom, ¿ya? ¿A mí? Se me dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. okay. Hey, Gina. I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing lately? Not even exciting. I have been working two jobs uh, for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've been only been spending money. I'm pursuing a full-time modeling career. Really? I can see the last line. Yeah, thank you. Uh, really? How long have you been uh, modeling? Since I graduate, but I haven't been getting any work. I need a job soon. I'm not, uh, almost out of money. Okay. <laughs> okay, and Raul and Rodrigo? Raul and Rodrigo Hernandez. Okay, yo puedo hacer pit. Rodrigo Hernández. O Delmi González. Okay. Okay. Hey Gina, I haven't seen you in age. What have you been doing lately? Nothing exciting. I've been working job for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've only been spending money. I'm pursuing a full-time modeling career. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. Uh, Rodrigo Hernández y Ever Antonio. Or who wants to practice? Somebody that haven't done it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Is missing. You can do it with uh, Rodrigo, Evelyn, if he wants to practice this conversation. Okay. Uh, Rodrigo and me. Okay. You are Pete, Rodrigo. Okay. Start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's start. 
Hello? Uh, yes? Yes. You are the first. You are Pete. Oh, okay. Hey, Gina. I haven't seen you name. What have you been doing lately? Nothing exciting. I've been working to you for the last six months. How come? I'm saving money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's excellent. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I only, I only didn't spend the money. I purchased for a bank money car. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been doing any work. I need a job soon. I almost out of money. Okay. We have time. We can practice the other conversation too. Okay, again, Jared and Karen. Okay, uh, hello. Oh, hello, I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think the Euro is used in EU. All oh, right, and is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Oh, well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Excuse me, my bad. Do you happen to have the contact number of a travel agency? Definitely no. Raul, and tell me. Okay. Okay. I start. Hello. Oh, hello. I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think the euro is used in the UA. All right. And is English spoken much there? I really have no idea. Hmm. Well, what about credit cards? Are they accepted everywhere? How would I know? Well, you're a travel agent, aren't you? What? This is a hard salon. You have the wrong number. Excuse me, my bad. Do you happen to have the contact number of a travel agency? And Rodrigo and Rodrigo. Me? Hello. Rodrigo, Rodrigo Hernandez and, and me. Yes. Okay. Uh, hello. Oh, hello, I need some information. What currency is used in the European Union? Where? The European Union. I think the euro is used in the EU. Oh, right. And is English talking with that? I really have no idea. Ah, uh, well, well, I want credit cards. Are they accepted everywhere? How will I know? Well, I'll tell you everything. What you? What? This is a hair salon. You have the wrong number. Excuse me, everyone. Do you happen to have the contact number of a travel agency? Yes, of course. <laughs> okay. We do excellent. 
<laughs> actually you did actually you guys did um so yeah i was listening to you of course uh, since the beginning and well i got it solved i think i do have the breakout rooms ready but not for tonight they're going to be ready for tomorrow because in order for them to be here i will have to finish the call or the um you know the meeting and i'm not willing to do that right now but yeah for tomorrow we do have the breakout rooms available um it was basically just not active uh as a as a setting um but now we do have them so you did great as evelyn you said uh you did an amazing job and it was nice to see you know how you guys were trying to like organize with one another in terms of like um getting to work together that's amazing it, and teamwork of course it's what uh it's all about you know because learning a language is always going to be about community and about like sharing with others and talking with others and that's what you were doing tonight um it was a little bit strange you know at some points because yes of course it's like it's a virtual environment it's not the same as like being in the same room and all that uh but it's great it's amazing so very good job i'm proud of you guys uh now i wanted to share just a bit just an introduction to what participles that as adjectives are in something that people um don't seem to understand all the time. The reason why this happens is that, sorry, is that um, we normally see this as verbs because of course that's the, the main function. You know, when you, whenever you see something that is in ing form, it's the first thing that comes to mind. It's a verb. It's a verb in its participle form, in its present participle form. When you see a verb that in, uh, it ends in ed, that's what's come to mind as well. You think about a verb that is in the past and it's a past verb. So, you know, it's something that um, very, very harshly, you're going to have the idea that it's something in um, that is working as an adjective. But surprise, surprise, it does. It does work as an adjective and it does depending on when you use it. Because, for example, when you read something, as this um com this sentence over here, the Stephen King's books are fascinating. So this is the main verb, are. This is the one that you are basically explaining or you're sharing. So the Stephen King's books are fascinating. So the verb, or sorry, the once that the once verb that now is used as an adjective, fascinating, is gonna work as an adjective because. We are trying to explain the reaction that we get because of the book. So that's the main reason to use um, the present participle verbs as adjectives because of the reaction, because of the um, the spontaneous feeling that we get from something. Okay, so if it's fascinating, it means that it's something a little bit active. You know, it's something that um, this thing generates in me but as a, a spontaneous reaction. However, if you say something like, I'm fascinated by Stephen King's books, this is something a little bit more passive. So it's more like a feeling. It's more like not the, necessarily the reaction, but what is stored inside you, what you keep with you. Um, so instead of saying are fascinating, which is like the first impression, you say, I am fascinated. So it's something that you keep with you, that you have it here, like you have saved that thing. Um, examples where you may see this as more um, like clear is when you use words like exciting. So if you say that something is exciting, it means, you know, that that is what you feel with this thing. When you're doing this, it's like you, you get excited. But if you say that you are excited about something, is the feeling that you're living, is the experience that you're having and that you keep it like in your heart. So when you're excited, it's like, okay, I feel great about it and I know that I feel great. However, when something feels exciting, it's simply like the a spontaneous reaction like that. Oh yeah, that looks exciting. You know, you can say that something looks exciting. However, you don't know if it is actually exciting. But when you have already experienced it, you can say, oh, okay, I'm excited that I tried that. I'm excited that I did that. So it's something that you have already experienced. So that's like the, 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 the difference that exists between using the present participles as adjectives and the past participles as adjectives. However, 
that's a topic that we're going to finish to cover tomorrow. Um, so please be here on time. You know, it's great that um, we are working together on discovering and developing more skills. So for now, that's it. That's all I had to share with you guys tonight. Thank you very much for your attention and your great participation with the conversations. I hope tomorrow is going to be as great as it was tonight. So have a good one and see you tomorrow. So bye-bye for now. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.